All right, good afternoon. That's today we will continue. Well, actually, when I say continue, it's um, really a continue. I pick up a, a kind of different uh, focus, a different shift on uh, Han Fei, the Chinese legal. Uh, before we start, let's go over on the schedule. And basically, not much change since last time. Uh, basically, today we talk about legalism and the, the Two weeks ago, we talked about uh, legalism, uh, focus on Han Fei. But that time, two weeks ago, we probably focused more on the uh, legalism and the legalism, compare legalism and the Confucianism. And today, we will put more effort on the legalism and the Taoism, which we were going to read uh, a chapter from uh, Zhuangzi, <coughs> which criticized uh, uh, legalism and the school of names. And uh, we will also read uh, Dao De Jing, uh, two chapter, which are uh, Han Fei have a different interpretation on the Dao De Jing. And another one we will read is uh, one uh, subject about uh, uh, five, five termites. That's a, a, a famous Han Fei's uh, writing. So I think that uh, article is pretty good. So <laughs> And the next week, we will, uh, Pin will continue to read the equality of things on the uh, inner chapter of Zhuang's uh, chapter two. Then I'm going to, beginning of May, I will start to continue on the book, The Short History of the Chinese Philosophy uh, from Feng Yulan. We will move on to the Han Dynasty, Dong Zhong Shu. Okay. And then May 15, May 14, um, uh, Shashi is going to continue to read the uh, uh, Hinduism, the seer and the sin. And probably we will start a series about uh, Hinduism uh, text reading, Leda uh, reading. Uh, we will pick one by one and gradually we will have some idea uh, about Hinduism. And then I will try to introduce uh, probably some series of um, Buddhism. So we will see the uh, connection between Chinese culture, Buddhism, uh, Buddhism thinking and the Hinduism. Um, then we move on, we were uh, going to later time, so-called so later time that's after the uh, uh, first century, uh, neo Taoism and the, the uh, neo Confucius, and then we'll start. So let's start for today. Uh, we will focus on the uh, legalism and the Taoism. Uh, for those, who, um, okay, a few things we will cover. Okay, first we will talk about a brief uh, uh, introduce uh, what is legalism. Legalism. Okay, I, and then we will read Zhuangzi, and then a few things about uh, different philosophy of history, because uh, legalism has a different view on Chinese history. That's ancient history. Then we read the uh, Han Fei's uh, Five Termites, and then we will read uh, Lao Tzu, and Han Fei has a different interpretation on Lao Tzu. So let's give uh, some quick background his uh, background on this one and uh, some people may know already and some people probably knew and for the person who knows uh, that's kind of a refresh and if you have a uh, today we don't I don't think we have a lot of people uh, so you can raise your hand okay and the pin please help me if I don't see the hands up um, <clears throat> So uh, we all know Chinese, uh, ancient Chinese philosophy have six major schools, so-called Confucianism, which is Ru, and of course we now have a Confucius, Confucius, Mencius, and to the later time Song Dynasty have a near Confucian, near Confucianism, and after uh, Confucius, we have a Mencius and uh, uh, Xunzi, uh, we, we, in general, people know as Mencius as uh, believe the human nature is good and Xunzi believe human nature is bad. That, that's not strictly speaking in this way, but another way to categorize Mencius and uh, Xunzi is Mencius is more idealistic and Xunzi is more 
realistic. And then we go to the legalism. Chinese legalism actually have a much longer history of Guangzhou, which is before Confucius time. And then it, it's not like a teacher, uh, teach a master, this, uh, a, a disciple, this kind of relationship, because they are all government office, officers, government officials. So they have their job to do. They just, you know, doing something. So not really have uh, produced a lot of academic writing. But in general, we can consider these people are uh, the got this kind of famous reformer as, uh, as Chinese legals until Han Fei, who is start to collect all the writing and consolidate. So Han Fei become the most, when we study uh, Chinese legalism, uh, the Han Fei's writing is important. And the Taoism, of course, and most people are familiar is from Laozi and the Zhuangzi and the later time, in about sixth century, we have the Neo Taoism. And the Moism, basically from Mozi, and we talk about this one a few uh, weeks ago, but basically it's not continue after the Qin, Di Qin dynasty is not continue. So it's not been, uh, 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 discussed, you know, uh, during the Chinese history. And the school of names, uh, basics, uh, 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 Hui Si and the Gong Sun Long. Okay, I think we already talked about this one before and the Yin Yang school, we also talked this one. And then <clears throat> today we will more focus on the legalism. Okay. Uh, let's give some, a little bit detail on the legalism, okay. As we mentioned, Confucius, okay, and he has a uh, student, or actually Mencius and uh, Xunzi are not direct uh, student from Confucius. They, they are about over 100 years after Confucius. So basically Mencius studied from Con Confucius' uh, grandson. So, uh, and Xunzi is a great uh, scholar. Uh, from Qi, the kingdom of Qi, okay. So both are considered rule school, which follow Confucianism. And the measures are more on the idealistic uh, school and the Xunzi is more practical. So he focused on education, uh, training, and he believed human nature is, we can say human nature is bad. Since human nature is bad, so we need education, we need study, and to improve yourself. So his student, two famous students, one is Han Fei, one is Li Si, and both become legalism, and both work for Qin Dynasty. So today we are going to read is the writing from Han Fei. Uh, uh, Li Si is uh, being the prime minister of Qin Dynasty, so he he probably doesn't have much time to write. And Han Fei is a starter, so he cannot speak well. So in this case, he write a lot. So uh, that's why we start to read uh, 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 Han Fei's writing. I did, we already covered this one before, but uh, let's talk about what is legalism okay, in, uh, in this sense. So uh, kind of a review, and I don't want anyone have a misunderstanding what's the meaning of legalism. So basically, legalism is not jurisprudence. It's not talking about law, like today's law schools, because you no, know, it's about the theory and the method of organization and the leadership. If you want to compare to what we have in the Western, is Machiavellian. Okay, so Machiavellian talk the prince, talk about how to control, how to deal with the situation, reward and the punishment, uh, what's the skill, uh, craftsmanship, this kind of thing. Basically, we call it the man of method. So the idea is different from other school. Basics uh, is talking about the ruler doesn't require uh, any special skill. As a ruler, you don't need to be, have a higher moral stand, standard. You don't need to be extremely smart. You don't have to work very hard. Basically, everyone, the ordinary people can rule a state as long as he deal uh, uh, with the, uh, his power properly. And that's the, talk, the, that's the teaching uh, on the uh, Chinese legalism. 
So in general, because legalism have a long history, in general, we can uh, put the legalism uh, in the three different group, okay? So that's in, uh, in general, we, say, uh, we, we group the legalism uh, uh, idea in three ways, so-called fa, uh, si, su, fa, okay? So shen dao, okay? Uh, it's talking about shi, which is the power, authority, potentiality, like pent up uh, uh, water, uh, this kind of concept. So you are a ruler, you are a prince, you already have the shi, the position you have. So you have to use your position well. So that's the, this school uh, focus. And another thing is so-called shen bu hai, shu, okay, that's the, we can call it the skill, how to state craft, how to handle people, how to deal with people. So uh, like a management, okay, how to, with the people. Uh, and another one is so-called fa, which means, uh, literally means law. But basics is talking about not, the, not much on the content of law, more on the uh, how to use law to uh, Govern your state instead of use people to to govern the uh, govern the state. So basically, that's the three school uh, three group in the legalism school. And Han Fei is the one who consolidate these three. His writing include uh, Fa Su Si these three different group, and they he consider all three are important. They so that's why we read Han Fei today. So uh, one thing we like to talk about is about name, okay? So <clears throat> all the, just like uh, beginning when Pin talk about like uh, Yi Jing is kind of like source of all the school or Chinese uh, civilization, uh, all dif different uh, philosophy school all talk about Yi Jing, which is the source of everything. Same as the name, Chinese, Ancient Chinese uh, fo focus on uh, uh, the name a lot, and they all talk about rectification of name, especially Confucius, okay? So, but when they talk about rectification of name, they imply different things for different schools. So I think that's very important to understand the different teaching in different philosophical group. Uh, for example, uh, Confucius like to talk about uh, rectification of name, Zheng uh, Min, Basic, he asked the question is, what should I do? Okay, basically it's a search, the actuality through the uh, through examination of names. So uh, as a father, uh, what your job as a father? As a son, what's your job as a son? As a ruler, as a minister, what's your job? So based on name, you are looking for, uh, when I give you a name as a son, or I inherit a name as a father, and I have my own responsibility and what I have to do. That's a Confucius focus. And when Xunzi talking about the name, it's a little bit so-called uh, 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 different way. It's depend on what you are doing and assign a good name to you, okay? So, uh, so uh, Xunzi is more realistic. When he look at somebody doing something and you will assign a name, okay, a correct name, for this person. Okay. So if a tyrant is a, a ruler doing something in this way, killing people, okay, enjoy, uh, uh, indulge himself in all kinds of luxury things, uh, he will give a name as tyrant. So that's a start to shift a little bit, okay, uh, to use the name. And the legalism is very different. When legalism talking about name, it kind of become a law, uh, become a job discretion. If I ask you to become a commander in the military, so I'm going to evaluate what did you do? Did you match uh, on your job discretion or not? And then based on this, give you a reward or punishment. If you do in a, 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 a match the job discretion, you got the reward. If you uh, did a match the job discretion, and you will have the punishment. So that's the co different concept uh, of different school. And of course, if you talk about the school of names, they just talk about names. What they believe is 
if you have the name and actual actual actuality and uh, focus on this and you can control everything that's the school of names thinking and the Taoist in more way is they totally disregard the name so they think name is not important you talk about a person is virtual or not virtual it's not important the name is not important to uh, Taoist. That's the general idea of the different school who treat the name differently. So basic so far we are, uh, I just give a, about 10 minutes review on the, uh, uh, on the legalism. So right now I'm open for some question or give a few uh, ideas. People, I just want to, before we start and everybody get an idea what's the uh, legalism. So, uh, or you have any question or any comment before we start, we are, we are going to uh, focus more on the Zhuangzi, <coughs> uh, criticize uh, on the uh, legalism. Any question or anything you want to uh, discuss before we move on? Okay, no, so look like everybody could find on the, uh, uh, legalism. So first, before we start, let, let's talk about Wu Wei, okay, the concept of Wu Wei. Right now, uh, uh, I will, uh, okay, <clears throat> so that's how, in general, most of people study Taoism. The first thing we will learn is uh, Wu Wei, okay, so-called the non-action, but it's so very famous saying is, uh, uh, practice Wu Wei, practice non vision but nothing left undone. So it doesn't mean that you just you know, sit there and uh, doing nothing, but basically they are talking about a situation or a skill. Uh, you don't have to busy all the time. You don't have to worry all the time and you look relaxed. You don't do a lot of things, but everything will finish. Okay, everything will be well done by itself. That's the concept. Uh, of Wu Wei. And let's see how legalism, legalism also talk about Wu Wei. Okay, so that's the writing from Han Feizi talking about cardinal uh, principle. I, I think it's, it's also quoted in uh, 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 Feng Yolan's writing. Uh, I just uh, put the, this writing here. Okay, so he said, just as the sun and the moon shine forth, the four seasons progress, uh, progress, the clouds spread, the, the wind blows, so does the ruler not encumber his mind with knowledge or himself with selfishness. He rely on for good government upon law, which is far and the state craft. So, okay, leave right and the wrong to be dealt with through, uh, with through a uh, reward and the punishment and the referred lightness and the heaviness to the balance of the scale. So basically he's talking about as a ruler, you should look at the sun, look at the, the four seasons, look at the, they don't have to do anything, okay? Everything just work uh, accordingly. So as long as you have the fa, which is law and the su, the skill to control the people, so with the far, <coughs> far the law, you have to, I think the last time we talked about the two different concept of far and the su. Far means the law, the uh, discretion, the, the command, what people have to do. You have to make everybody know what you need to do. And then you have the state credit, which is su. This one will deal with the people, your minister. So if you have this one uh, in your hand, you are in a good position as uh, Shi, okay? And then you don't have to do a lot of things, okay? Basics, people will follow the, uh, uh, follow the fa, the law and do what they should do. And then you just use, can use Su to control the ministers and then uh, they will uh, do the reward and the punishment for you. So basics as a ruler, you are practice Wu Wei and your, con your country, your state will be governed. So that's the concept of uh, 
uh, Han faith or Chinese legalism. They are talking about the uh, talking about the Wu Wei. So that's their interpretation of the Wu Wei. Okay. So, uh, so uh, then we are going to read Zhuang Zi's uh, writing, which is uh, about the so-called the Tian Dao, the Dao of Heaven. Okay. So, uh, Alex, you have any comment? Yeah, I want to ask, um, can you go back to the last slide? The, the, yeah, the cardinal principles, um, the laws and the statecraft uh, is mentioned here. And, uh, but um, isn't it ultimately to achieve a power, which is uh, you have previously mentioned about legalism, the three, uh, the three branches mm -hmm. is power, is the laws. So it, is it ultimately to achieve power through laws and statecraft? Okay, uh, I think that's a good question. Okay, Who, I think the situation is the Si, okay, but that's your position. You will have this position. And when you stay this position, you will use law, which is a Fa, and the Su, which is a statecraft to deal with your, to govern your state. Okay, so I think later on, um, uh, uh, I think today I also include, that's why I say that's a good question because it brings up to, I want to uh, present at the very end of today. Because uh, uh, Han Fei is talking about si, okay? The ruler need a, the si, just like a fish need the water, okay? If you out of water, they will die. If you have in the water, you will survive. So the si is just like fish in the water. And he quote from Dao De Jing, okay? One chapter in the Dao, Dao De Jing, I think chapter 27, okay, talk about fish have to stay in the water. And he had gave a totally meaning. He said that the water is just like a si and the fish is just like the ruler. You need to be in the water. If you're not in the water, you lost your si and you will die. So that's a Han face information. <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So I think that to the end will be very interesting because uh, I think some of you already read uh, Dao De Jing and then we have a different interpretation. But then you will see how Han Fei or Chinese legalism, when they read the Dao De Jing, their mind is totally different. They, they, they think about different things. So, uh, Pin, please. Yeah, I, ju I just want to note that um, on this topic, Han Fei was very dedicated to studying Laozi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, you know, two of the chapters in his book was dedicated to, one was called Jie Lao, which are explanations of Laozi. And the other chapter is Ru Lao, they say stories elucidating Laozi. Yeah. And, um, so he was very greatly influenced. To me, it was always a wonderful arc of history that I think like Feng Yolan uh, wrote, on the surface of it, uh, uh, Taoism and legalism appear like uh, diametrically opposing schools of philosophy. But then at the end, the great uh, legalist philosopher at the end was probably saw himself uh, as a as a Taoist, uh, but in, in any case, uh, it was very heavily influenced by Taoism. So all the two opposing arcs all at the end converged into one. So Pin, since you put this subject, okay. So let me ask you one question. I I I'd like to know your opinion. You said uh, you think Han Fei is heavily influenced by Taoism, but I am thinking of another way is because he is legalism. That's why he interprets the Taoism different way. So that's my opinion. I don't know how do you think uh, you think he's got influenced by uh, Lao Tzu or you think he just read Lao Tzu differently? My gut feeling is that he truly believed his way was the actual implementation of, of Tao. Okay, okay. Of way in, in the world. Okay. Lao Tzu exactly. gave these abstract principles, and his uh, what he what he came up with was really how it was uh, it would be practiced. Okay, got you, got your point. Yeah, thank you, uh, Alex, please. 
I actually, I was wondering about the same thing, actually. And <laughs> I, I feel that because I read your slides before the class, so, um, I, I feel that it kind of like he was just taking whatever that suits his theory. As we know, the theory of legalism is actually is more or less based on the fact that humans beings are all bad, like Xunzi. So um, I felt that he was taking whatever, whatever that suits the theory to support his own theory. So was he really a fan of Taoism, uh, of, of, of Taoism, of Laozi? I am not so sure. <laughs> You know, because I see the uh, he also took um, from other theories to suit or even twist some of the th theories, you know, in order to fit his own, you know, to, to fit it to, to like make his uh, uh, arguments, you know, stronger. So um, I have that suspicion. Yeah. That's okay. So oh, I think we, we can discuss this one later. And, and I read the, the Si Lao. Okay, so which is the uh, explanation of uh, Taoism. He not only he quote from uh, Lao Tzu, and he also provide a lot of historical account to prove what Lao Tzu said is it. But you know, we will see you know uh, uh, later see uh, how how he uh, uh, interpret uh, uh, Lao Tzu. Is he truly believe this way of uh, 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 to implement Taoism, or he has his own mind? Okay. Uh, pin, please. Uh, well, just very quickly, why I'm a little less skeptical is <laughs> if you read Lao Tzu, right, it's easy to understand why such interpretations would come up. Uh, for example, Shen Ren Bu Ren Yi, Wang Wei Chu Go, the sage, you know, from Lao Tzu, the sage has no kindness, treats everything as the straw dogs. So this, and you can see why someone would say, oh, well, you know, this is my, my legalist uh, view fits, is, is really uh, fits right into that. And uh, also there's, um, you know, passages in Lao Tzu about keeping, whether it's, there are many different interpretations of what Lao Tzu's writing was, but you can interpret it as, you know, passages like, uh, don't educate the people, but just keep them well-fed and, uh, and strong. And uh, there's a lot of things about, you know, educating the masses is not a good thing. So, so I, I think he, uh, my, yeah, that's why I, I, my gut feeling is that he genuinely uh, believed that this was his, um, his philosophy and system was, was Taoism. Okay. Uh, that's, so all, that's, that's all. That's, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Pin. Okay. So uh, I, let's put this subject on hold and then to the end, we will know, you know, and I think we will see. So let's spend a, deal, uh, a few minutes to uh, read. Uh, Zhuangzi's uh, writing from one chapter, and it's quoted in uh, Hong Yulan's writing, and I just uh, uh, expanded to make it more uh, complete, uh, uh, complete, because I personally, I don't think that makes sense, just, you know, for uh, just pick up one or two sentences and read it. I, I would like to read it, uh, not probably don't have time to the whole chapter, but at least we, will, we should read uh, the whole paragraph to understand uh, what uh, Zhuangzi is talking about, because if you just pick up one, well, I think uh, Feng Yulan just pick one or two sentences uh, to describe, and that, I don't think that uh, show the whole picture of the Zhuangzi's critics uh, uh, writing on this one. Uh, this uh, chapter called Tian Dao, uh, the Tao of the Heaven. So three things uh, Zhuangzi is talking about in this paragraph. One is to explain what's the meaning of Wu Wei in, in Zhuangzi's point of view. And uh, he talked about so-called nine step or nine level of the governing, how to govern the state. So very political writing. And uh, then he start to criticize uh, the school of names and uh, basically legal, legalism. He didn't name it, but he meant that they are doing the wrong thing. They're doing the very uh, uh, detail, uh, the very uh, small scale basics. Uh, that's the Zhuangzi the criticize. So, so let's read from the uh, 
beginning. So basics, <coughs> Zhuangzi, the Tao of Heaven. Okay, that's the one paragraph uh, he started to write. He said that the superior must practice Wu Wei so as this to employ the world, but the subordinate must have activity so as this to be employed by the world. So, uh, it, so that, let's look at this one a little bit different. Because this one is not talking about uh, your personal uh, uh, activity. Right now, the audience is the prince, the ruler. Okay, so basically it's talking about Wu Wei. So uh, that, that, that's a little bit different than when people talk about Wu Wei, right? When we think about Wu Wei, we probably think about ourselves, right? When I deal with my daily life or my uh, attitude to uh, my business. But here uh, is very political. That's why uh, Feng Yolan and uh, pick up these paragraphs because it's, it's addressed to the ruler, right? He, they are not like naive, let's say, oh, we don't do anything, like uh, Taoism, uh, Lao Tzu, uh, Tao Tzu, a little bit you can say naive, basics, you kind of like believe the people not doing things, uh, uh, the, the, the ruler on hands off, and that everything will be done. That's a little bit too uh, far away, too naive. But here, Zhuang Zi is talking about address to the ruler. He talk about there's two kinds of people who employ the world and another people are have act, which doesn't need activity. And the person who have activity is employed by the world. So let's set the situation right. Basics, the, they are talking about the same situation. They are addressed to the ruler, okay? Both are them talking about Wu Wei. Han Fei talking about uh, uh, you have the law, you have the fa, you have the uh, statecraft, the su, the control the people. So you don't have to do anything. but. Zhuangzi also talk about the same thing. Okay, talk about you are employing the world, the world. Okay, and and then uh, uh, they have the people doing things. Okay, which is employed by the world. Okay, so right now you talk about the ruler. Okay, you employ the world. You can practice Wu Wei. This is invariable way, which is Tao. Therefore, the ruler in the ancient time, whenever. Uh, uh, a writing, okay, in Chinese writing, talk about the ancient time, that means the good time, okay, that's the proper way. Although their knowledge spread throughout the whole universe, did not themselves think. Although their eloquence beautified all things, they did not, they did not themselves speak. Although their ability exhausted all things within the world, they did not themselves act. So he talked about the ancient time, the good time. Um, even the ruler have all the knowledge. He can speak very well, very convincing. He has all kinds of super uh, ability, but they don't, uh, they don't uh, think, they don't act, and they don't speak, okay? Because they are practiced Wu Wei. Then he will have a further uh, uh, a metaphor on that. Talk about heaven produce nothing, yet all things transform. Earth does not grow itself, yet all things are, are nurtured. The king did, did nothing, which is Wu Wei, yet all the world testify they are effective of service. Hence, there is nothing more spiritual than heaven. There is nothing richer than earth. There are no, nothing greater than the king. The attributes of the king correspond to those of heaven and the earth. It was the Tao of employing the world, utilizing all things, and handling all people. So here, Zhuangzi is talking about the, uh, the ruler, okay? You should not do anything. Even you have superpower, you can speak very well, you, are, you have all kinds of knowledge, you have all kinds of uh, ability, but you don't act, you don't think. You don't speak basics. You just behave like heaven and the earth. Heaven didn't do anything. Earth didn't do anything. Didn't grow itself. But everything within the earth will grow. So basics as a ruler, as a king, you should be like heaven and the earth. You don't have to do everything. Everything will go itself. It sounds very like Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching, but here is the different here. Okay. 
so he get go to more detail okay and how you can call it the step by step and you can call it a uh, 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 different level of governing okay so uh pin you have uh, something to say daniel raised uh raised oh, daniel. Yeah, yeah 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 i'm just uh, i'm trying to understand this Wu way concept and okay, i mean please. there's in one sense you know and i don't know what's right so i do nothing and half the time or most of the time things solve themselves you know <laughs> time goes on and it sort of takes care of itself it's like almost ignorance in some way i don't can't predict the future i see two points of view so let me do nothing for now and hopefully it'll solve itself. I don't know if that's fits in with the Wu Wei philosophy on the one hand. And on the other hand, it's almost like to be one with the world. That's another meaning of Wu Wei. Okay, just to be in touch and go with the flow, sort of. So I don't know if those two concepts go with the flow, do nothing, things will work themselves out. Does that describe I, it? Okay, I think everyone will have a different, uh, slightly different opinion on that. I just have to uh, share my own opinion. I will say that your first explanation, I will say not right, because it's a too passive. You just let things go and then you you just, uh, you practice Wu Wei doing nothing. And then remember the second sentence is nothing left undone. Okay, so basics, you probably have nothing done if you, just sit passively and they go whatever. And the second thing, second, your second point, I, I will agree, which is go with flow. You don't do when the people wear mask, you wear mask, okay? You just, most of the people think, oh, we should wear mask. Just let people wear mask, because even you disagree, disagree because after a while, they will understand wearing mask is not uh, so effective. And then when people not wearing mask, you don't push too much, but you just kind of like, uh, give us some message. So this kind of a subtle skill. Okay, so I think that, that would be the Wu Wei. And then uh, if you read the Confucian teaching, okay, so pursue the perfect uh, perfection. And then uh, uh, Confucius will say, uh, the sun and the moon, the star, they move, never stop. And we should be like, then, you know, keep walking, keep moving. And then you will know what, uh, Wu Wei meet Wu Wei doesn't like this kind of behavior. We Wu Wei talking about about different kind of idea. So that's the only thing I have to say. But you know, and I hope I answer your question. And I believe uh, it takes a while to uh, understand the concept of Wu Wei. So Daniel, I think that, do I answer some part of your question? Yeah, yeah, it helps a lot. But you okay. know, I, if I take it personally, I say sometimes I don't have the courage to do anything, so I become passive. <laughs> you know, that's that. Yeah, but another way you look at it, if you work in a company and you sometimes you will expect your manager, I assume you are not a manager. So if you you sometimes you will expect your manager practice Wu Wei because uh, I think a lot of people complain. Uh, if they, they, the, your manager, my manager interfere too much, you know, keep telling me doing this, doing this, don't do this, don't do that. Come on, leave me alone. I, I know what to do. So I hope my manager pra practice the way. So that's another way you think about this. So. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great example where you're raising a kid or you're a coach or a teacher. Sometimes uh, being overactive and intervening all the time is not the best thing. Maybe maybe on that day, you know, you feel like you, you're getting more done, but at the end of it is whoever you're trying to train or coach is not developing and not uh, making independent decisions. So yeah, thank you. A, yeah. I think they're basically all of the above, you know, that's maybe that's why uh, Lao Tzu is so attractive. The book uh, is thousands of years later, it's very vague and it's developed into all these different schools of interpretation. Yeah, uh, Wu Wei, the con concept is, uh, uh, I because I've been in the uh, Tao Te Ching 52 living ideas, uh, reading from the beginning to the end. And I can tell at the beginning, people have a different uh, 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 so-called misunderstanding of, of Wu Wei. And the, to the end, you know, people start to get used to. And then I think everybody's mind have their 
interpretation of Wu Wei. I believe they are different, but, uh, uh, but they all got the idea. So uh, it takes a while to, to, to get this idea. So may, let's may continue. I make a very quick remark. As I just want to note that Zhuangzi, you know, this is a chapter from the book of Zhuangzi, but it doesn't necessarily mean that Zhuangzi wrote it. Yeah, uh, great. Yeah. Actually, it's most people th believe, yeah, the, for example, this chapter was not written by Zhuangzi, probably a Taoist of that period, uh, maybe a little bit later than Zhuangzi. Uh, and you, you can see there's a, a evolution, right? There here, it's a one interpretation of Wu Wei. And maybe a little later time, it becomes fully developed into Han Fei's uh, interpretation. Oh, okay, I got your point. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, quick question. This uh, Tao of Heaven by John, is it within the seven chapters of the first seven chapters? No. No, it's on the uh, 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 pin. Is that on the outer chapter? It's I believe it's in the outer chapter, which okay, yeah, we, yeah, most scholars believe were not were not written by Zhuangzi. Yeah, it's outer or miscellaneous. I, I, that's that's my question. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. Laws of antiquity. Okay, antiquity means the good. Okay, uh, who manifested the great Tao first? The manifested heaven, and then Tao and the De. Okay. That's the number two, uh, and the Tao and the Der come out. Tao and the Der being manifested, the, vir the, vi the virtues of Ren, which is a benevolence, and the Yi, which is righteousness, okay, come, came out. This being manifested, the division of office came out. This being manifested, actuality and the names come out. This being manifested, government employment came out. This being manifested, examination and evaluation came out. This being manifested, judgment and of the right and the wrong come, came out. This being manifested, reward and the punishment came out. With the manifestation of reward and the punishment, the foolish and the, the wise assumed their proper position. The noble and the humble uh, occupied their proper places and the virtuous and the worthless were employed according to their nature. So basically talk about the good government, how to govern. And let me I just summarize with the, the five different level. So first you have to understand the heaven. And after you understand heaven, that's a pretty um, typical uh, style of writing or logic or thinking in the ancient Chinese uh, philosophy, basically do it like, step by step, okay, from the foundation to the detail, from the root to the branch to the leaves. So basically that's the idea. If you remember at the beginning of this year, we talk about the great learning and also the uh, Confucius, Confucian scholar also doing the same way of argument. Okay, so basically talk about nine level or nine step, right? From the heaven, you understand the heaven, then you have, uh, then you will naturally, you have the Tao and the De, which is, you know, Tao and the De in Tao De Jing is two things, two different uh, concepts. But here, if you put Tao and the De together, probably means virtuous or means some moral reasoning. Okay, this kind of concept. And after you have the Tao and the De, okay, then the Ren, okay, and the Yi, which is, very Confucius moral. And uh, today we use Ren Yi as a general moral. Okay, so uh, this one will come out. So you, you will see, you understand the Tian and uh, you will kind of have the Taoism uh, concept uh, come out. Then you have the Ren Yi, which is a Confucian. Okay, it's an idea of moral. And uh, then after all this one, uh, 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 come out, then you will have a division of offices. That's you know the government, talk about government, different branches of the government. Then after that, you have the actuality and the names. Basics, you can consider this one is the after the different uh, office of government, then 
uh, you have the job description, everybody know what to do. So they will go to number six, the government employment. You can start to hire people, have people work in the government. Then you have the examination and the evaluation, which is to evaluate how well, okay, they, everybody doing the job. And the next step, you just have to make uh, have the judgment of who do it right, who is wrong, and then you have the reward and the punishment. So let's put it at the nine level okay, of the governing a state. So basics, that's the Zhuangzi, uh, the, when I say Zhuangzi, not necessarily Zhuangzi, the person, but basically the book uh, is writing about the government. So you can see this nine step. And I try to do my best to research and to find the right uh, translation to English. And I include the Chinese here. So is anyone who read Chinese and they can give a better uh, a translation, I really appreciate it. Or you have to criticize on the, uh, my translation, I also welcome because I just try my best to translate the two character Chinese to English. So, uh, Pim, please. Oh, yeah, I just want to add, uh, I, I really agree with you. Um, earlier, you said this, you know, this chapter is um, an explanation of a lot of chapters in Lao Tzu. Uh, you, you see, uh, this part is, to me, is also an elaboration of the chapter in Lao Tzu where I can't recall the exact text, but basically saying that the greatest ruler, the greatest leaders are such that the people under uh, the leader don't even know who this person, you know, who the leader is. And yeah. then the next is everyone loves the praises and loves the, you know, likes the leader. And then the next one is everyone's fearful of the leader. And then the next is, I, I forget what the, the other levels are. It's- uh, Everybody hate the, the, they, they, they hate the leader. So basically- Yeah, the, hate and loathe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you, you see as, you know, the hunt centuries go on, the interpretation has become more elaborate and, uh, and, and branch off into different schools of uh, philosophy. Yeah, thank you, Pin, yeah. So, uh, so that's uh, Zhuangzi uh, writing, and then we will see how Based on, so Zhuangzi, okay, let's put in the three parts, right? The first part, the Zhuangzi is talking about the uh, uh, Wu Wei, okay, so what's the position as a ruler you need to do? Then he talk about, but he's not like before, long time ago, it's, it's not elaborate, just say, oh, okay, then everything will be left, nothing will be left undone. So right now he talk about, he knows some people have to do some work to have the job done. So basically he list, the devil, different devil, it is the night devil, right? Just so we talk about here. So from the uh, heaven, Dao De, Dao and the De, and the moral, the uh, Ren and the Yi and division, you know. So at, to the that last few part, right? You will see it's very modern, you know, even in today's government, if you think about uh, uh, our government, probably is not far away from this kind of discretion. So you will see, another thing you can see is, uh, Chinese bureaucratic system is developed in a very early time. You already know to evaluate the employee, the government employees, and know how to everybody the division of labor, division of the office, and this very early develop, very advanced compared to other states. So let's see how Zhuangzi criticize uh, other school. So basically, those of an antiquities who speak about mention, uh, okay, uh, who spoke about uh, the great mentioned actuality and the names only at the fifth level. Okay, so basically, he's talk about the school of names. He, they keep, they didn't talk about anything else. They just start from the actuality and the names, right? And the reward and the punish only at the ninth level. Okay, so. The, the must means uh, legal is a system. They just, they don't talk about anything else. They just jump in. They talk about heaven. They don't talk about the Tao and the De. They don't talk about the uh, Ren and the Yi, which is the general moral. They don't talk about division of government. They just jump into reward and the punishment. That's the very end, very low level, the nice level, okay, of the government. 
So he who speak immediately about the actuality and the net does not know the fundamentals. He who speaks immediately about the reward and the punishment, which is Han Fei, right, does not know their beginning. They know the, he knows the implements of government, but not its principle. He can be employed by the world, but is not sufficient to employ the world. He is a one-sided man and only knows how to talk. Okay, so basic talk about Han Fei and the, the people in the school of names, they don't understand the nine different level and from the fundamental principle to the detail. They just like school of names, like Hui Si or Gong Sun Long, they just directed immediately talk about actuality and the names. And the, like Han Fei, just immediately talk about reward and the punishment and they call it the two handles. You can deal with the whole state with the reward and the punishment. He said, no, no, no. You only know the detail uh, to implement the government, but you don't know the basic principle. Okay, so that's kind, this kind of person is one-sided man and only know how to talk, actually. It's not working. So basics, that's Zhuangzi, the criticize on uh, legalism and the school of names. So, uh, that's the uh, uh, finish of this right, uh, reading. And then before we move on, and if you have any question and then uh, or you have any opinion, you are welcome to discuss. And let's give a few minutes to discuss if you, if you want. So no, everything, okay, uh, iPhone, Alina and the pin, Alina, please. Mm, yes, and uh, yeah, thank you, Jason. One of my questions is, in this particular interpretation from the standpoint of a leg legalist and legalism, what it is, what would be the fundamental, Differences and definition of Tao, Tao is the way, right? And Te or De, what's De yeah. in this particular interpretation? You mean Thank Tian, you. The, the heaven? Te, yeah, no, Tao the, after the, the heaven. <laughs> uh, that's a big question, okay? Uh, 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 because this one, you talk about the Tao of heaven, okay? So you ask the uh, very fundamental question. Uh, Heaven is a kind of divine, okay, and then and that will be the the way of the God or the the, uh, the way of the divine way, okay. So it's very vague, just like like Wu Wei, but basically that's the highest. If you are a Muslim, that's Easter, okay. That means that submission to the God, and then so. Uh, uh, I think that's, a, that, that's the only thing I can answer right now. And the pin probably have a better way to describe it. Do you have a better way or, or you have anything else to talk about pin? Uh, I don't have a better way, but I have a kind of a marginally related uh, idea, I guess. Okay, please. As we were discussing, it suddenly occurred to me, the, the vagueness of Lao Tzu's writing is actually an example of Wu Wei. If he had defined everything very clearly, it would not have given birth to all these other schools of philosophy. And uh, we, would have, uh, we would not spend so much energy uh, to understand what Tao really is, what De really is, what Tian really is. And uh, it would have restricted, it would have been easier for us to read his book, but at the same time, it would have restricted our uh, intellectual creativity and the insights that we would have gotten from the book. So in a way, you know, he did a lot less in his writing, but uh, it created a lot more. Yeah, thank you, Pin. And I think the, uh, uh, the, it's a, the very difficult question. That's probably the Tian and the Tao. That's probably the most difficult. <laughs> Alina, you asked the the, 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 the two most difficult words to interpret. What is the Tian, okay, the heaven, and the, the Tao. So uh, I think that's our pin and I, that's our best to answer because this, this one you probably take, require many years to understand you know, what's the meaning. You know. 
sorry about this <laughs> uh, answer, but yeah, uh, that's our best. Um, who is next? Uh, let's go to uh, Kevin, Alex, and uh, CK. Uh, Kevin, please. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Um, yeah, I'm gonna follow it up since you guys talk about the TN doll. Um, that's <laughs> one of our trans uh, some terms. We need to keep the original words. We try to describe it, it would be better. If you directly translate, uh, for example, doll to uh, heaven. I uh, know, uh, yeah. So oh, it's, yeah. Tia, tia is heaven. That's I mean, ye, we're going to misleading if I'm a religious people. <laughs> if I'm an English speaker, oh, heaven, okay. I have a heaven meaning. It's, it can, they're going to uh, intensely, okay, that's a heaven in China. Actually, that's here about the language itself. From the tia directly translated to English, sky. So we kind of use uh, this in the Dao, the sky was mean, or in Chinese, what's the name of Tian, Tian, Tia Dao, this. And, and the second word, the Dao, is so, yeah, i glad you put a Dao, not the way, not the way of heaven, but even more <laughs> second word. Uh, we try to describe the Dao. Uh, for example, we could, uh, what's the English word? I've got a Iraq uh, for the food Dao. Basically, describing our even your organs or it, it, the word of its doll is everywhere. And uh, also the sky, the tear, that, that's uh, lots of, by the way, uh, too better for this chapter. You see, you, I'm going to use the highlight one. The words and the punishment only at a nice level. That means that's a basic level uh, for the law. Let's we practice laws. Everything based on law. If I obey the law, everything done. It's not. It's a nice level. Jason, can you slide back and uh, uh, the, your last slide? Yeah, this one. Yeah. You see, that's the last. That's yeah, about the Chinese um, practice. We consider law. That's the minimum basic. The, the top one is the Ming Tie, enlightenment of Tie. Ming, you, you see that word, zi yue wei ming, as moon and sun. Lots of wisdom uh, for Chinese philosopher or, or ordinary people will learn from nature itself. How nature works, how night and evening, how sun turn. Those things, like uh, by, uh, back a little bit along the side of track, uh, uh, Ping used a tie di bu leng chu zi wei chu go. Don't, if you, we, Use the modern day understanding, we consider that's bad. Why, right? you know, the sky and heaven and earth is uh, dealing, you know, like a dog. It's not. We, because we abandoned, uh, abandoned uh, with mind of uh, virtue, with human virtue on it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, so we have a, a few hands up, and then let's give only, let's say, okay, 10 minutes, no more than 10 minutes. And I need to move up. So uh, let's go this order. Uh, Alex, CK, Madeline, and the Pip. Okay. Uh, Alex, please. Yeah, actually, I, um, the reason why I asked uh, about this chapter is uh, also my suspicion that it was not written by Zhuangzi, it was written by other people. Yeah, and, I agree. and I find it, I'm so sorry, but I find this chapter in conflict with uh, the first seven chapters of John's. I mean, we just studied the first, uh, uh, first chapter. One of, the, one of the story that really stood out to me is uh, when, they, when, it, when, when it says that real sage has no name. So this <laughs> nine steps of governing is total, in total contradiction of <laughs> first Wu Wei, also, real sage. So I think somebody wrote this chapter as in uh, as a as a get back to other schools of, of thoughts. Uh, but I believe real Zhuangzi philosophy is that real sage has no name, and that Wu Wei is is it Wu Wei. I think in Zhuangzi really means that having trust in others. You know, it's it like I trust that the tree is going to grow, the flower is going to blossom, they're going to do their own things, you know, with whatever they are born with, 
whatever they do. So and as and and not um, uh, uh, controlling or telling others what to do, what is right or wrong. In 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 actuality, I think Taoism is not about mercy or moral. No, Taoism really means you know force of nature. As we've studied, you know, in the chapter one of the of the, you know, and I, I deep I was deeply very impressed by that. So that's why I want to point out that these levels of good governing, I'm I cannot agree that this is true, like Zhuangzi, you know. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh Alex. Yeah. Uh I kind of like, you know, I, I, I that's my own experience. I think this one is going to more detail and the, really depend on who you speak to, right? If you want to speak to the regular person, and then this one, if you have to speak to the ruler, that could be a little bit different, you know? So uh, that's just my opinion, you know? So, you know, and then of course it's not written by the same person. I agree, you know, definitely. Um, the next one would be CK, please. Oh, hello, hi. I would like to uh, give my take on a uh, few concepts like Tian, Dao, and Wu Wei. Okay. Like, for example, Tian, I don't think can be defined. The concept of heaven or, un, or you know, heaven is, is uh, just a, a close approximation in English. It's all encompassing. You know, anything that is uh, up, up there that is uh, not in our temporal realm is considered okay. Tian. Uh, so it's it's uh it's it's a it's just a rough translation in the English. It cannot be defined like uh, in a precise um, semantic way, I think. And then Tao is another one. As I say, Tao ke Tao fei chang Tao, ming ke ming fei chang ming. So the Tao cannot be defined. If the more you want to define and analyze and classify the Tao, the the the, the worse it becomes. So it is a uh, it is just like air, you know, it's just like water. It's just uh, the movements of, of, of the body. It's just how it is. You know, it, it, you can't define it like uh, break it into particles. Um, then Wu Wei, the contradiction between, uh, between doing nothing and, 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 and doing something, you know, when, when we try to define this concept, perhaps we can look at it from a different perspective. Once you have done all you need to do, you have built a clock, for example. You don't have to keep tweet, uh, tweaking the clock. It works. So therefore, you stand back and let the clock work. It's Wu Wei. But before you have Wu Wei, you are, already, you are building the clock. So you, you did something to make a clock. And then after you have created the clock, you let the clock work. You don't interfere with it. That's why it's Wu Wei. But before you have Wu Wei, you, you, you have your way. So that's perhaps a different way, maybe an incorrect way of understanding the concept. I mean. Okay, so, uh, thank you, CK. And uh, then I really appreciate that everybody provide your own interpretation. And uh, then uh, uh, the, the person who know, even you think you are not sure, you know, that, that's very good to, to explain. And uh, I believe. Our learning. Uh, I believe the people have no idea of uh, what's meaning of Tian, Tao, Tao, or Wu Wei. And by listening this, you will improve your understand. Even myself, I thought I understand well before I joined uh, this meetup. But I think keeping uh, being asked different questions and uh, being listened to different people's idea. And personally, I feel I also have. Uh, make a lot of progress. Yeah, a lot of progress. Yeah, uh, Madeline, please. Yes. Uh, let's see. So, still on this slide, yeah. I'm seeing uh, uh, the heavens, Tao and De, uh, and uh, number five, actualities and names, seems to be where uh, political philosophy is intersecting with metaphysics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think in actualities and names, uh, something just clicked in my little mind, which was uh, here, the name is the role or the job description of the, of the office uh, that, you're, that you're in. The actuality is 
how you embody that role, the tasks that you perform, and whether you live up to your job description, basically. Uh, in the metaphysical section, um, there is the uh, white horse, not horse, <laughs> and there's also the hard white stone. Uh, and those are different, they also are called actualities and names. Um, but in the metaphysics, um, the actualities are not made to live up to the names, um, obviously. <laughs> um, and it, it's just, it's, it's interesting to see an overlap um, between the, the political philosophy and the metaphysics. I, I don't know where it's, how that's going to unfold as we go along, but I, I like the juxtaposition of the actualities and names in this realm, along within the metaphysical realm. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Madeline. Yeah, I think by listening to what you talk about, I think that's interesting. You know, this one probably, if, if you look at it from the beginning, okay, it's kind of like divine, you know, this kind of concept, then go to a little bit moral sense, then you go to the metaphysics, you know, and then you go to political, you know, step by step. So that's, I would not say that's the correct way, but basics, let's represent one way of thinking in this writing, right? Uh, Pin, uh, after Pin, we are going to move on to the second part of uh, today's uh, meetup. Pin, please. I have two thoughts to share. One is I, yeah, all these, um, abstract concepts, uh, Wu Wei and Dao, these difficult ones, uh, Tian. In fact, we sh okay, first of all, I don't think there's a correct or uh, any correct or wrong answer. And number two, I don't think we should even answer <laughs> because uh, that's the whole point. I, I want to share a quote um, from Zhuangzi. Uh, Words are employed to convey ideas, but when ideas are captured, humans forget the words. How could I find someone who forgets the words so I may converse with him? So, uh, so there you go. Uh, yeah. Because everyone should have their own answer for themselves, not uh, some answer from you or me, because that's useless. Um, they, yeah. <laughs> and another thing is uh, on translation, I, I, I totally agree with what uh, Kevin and Adam said. I, I just want to uh, recall. Uh, reminds me that the great uh, monk in Tang Dynasty, Xuanzang, who traveled to India and translated a lot of uh, sutras, he has five rules for words that shall, shall, shall not be translated and should be only transliterated. Uh, the first one is our words that have, uh, that have very deep abstract meanings. And the uh, second one is uh, words that have many multiple meanings. The third one are things that refer, nouns that refer to things that uh, don't exist in China, didn't exist in China, like a certain tree that, uh, that, that you know, were, uh, was common in, in India, but not, uh, not, not known in China. Uh, the fourth one is, if there were already pre-existing translations, even if it was not very good, uh, he would just keep with that so people don't get confused. And the last one is there are certain terms in Sanskrit that were um, sacred, were out of deference, that he would just keep the sound and not to tra try to translate into some uh, Chinese word. I thought those were, he was very wise. So. Yeah, thank you, Pin. You know, I think that's the reason I keep the translation of heaven because it has been uh, used this translation for many, many texts. That, uh, 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 that's why I know uh, everybody suggests me to use Tian, T-I-A-N as a uh, heaven, okay, but mm -hmm. uh, because in all the texts, other reading, they, the writer always use heaven. And that's why, you know, I keep using heaven. So you know, I, mm -hmm. I, that, that's the thing. And another thing I really appreciate uh, uh, Pin talk about, we should not answer. So from now on, you can ask the question about Tian and the Tao and the Wu Wei, and then I'm not going to answer. So 
Thank you, Pim. <laughs> you know what Transit will do? Transit will say, I have no answer, but I, need, I can tell you a few stories. <laughs> yeah, so please ask any question you want, and I'm not going to answer. So that's Pim's advice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's move on, and let's talk a little bit about uh, philosophy of history. I think uh, uh, Fong Yolan has a writing on this one, and I think that's important on this one. And at the beginning, uh, Alex uh, mentioned about the Chinese history. So I'm going to do the early history, okay, for a while, uh, not for a while, for, let's do it quickly, okay. Uh, Daniel, your hands up. Uh, you have a quick question before I move on? No question, just uh, I'm saying you're not answering is an example of Wu Wei. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the su uh, good suggestion. I'm going to practice Wu Wei. <laughs> Okay. By not answering, we answer everything. <laughs> yeah, by not answering, then every question got answered. So, okay, let's move on. Okay. Uh, uh, let's do the early. I think so that's, you know, in general, Chinese belief, that's the uh, common belief in the early time. Okay, that's so called the Nestor. Okay, your Cao Shi. Okay, so uh, I think you would, I, I was, if you like to do some Chinese ancient uh, text reading by yourself, I would suggest you to keep, uh, I think you can assess this uh, slide. Keep this name uh, 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 with you when you read it, because uh, so many times the ancient Chinese uh, writer or mention these names, and then you should have some idea, just like when you read uh, uh, Western philosophy, when they mention Socrates, when they mention the uh, Zeus, Hera, means Juno, you know, uh, uh, Venus, you know what they are talking about, you know. So I think that's the name you need to know. So basically, you talk about Nestor, Kindler, the basic is the, uh, uh, Permissius, or he bring the fire to, to the people, right? And the, the farmers, or you call Shen Nong Shi, okay, basics that represent the time Chinese go to the agricultural state. And the Yellow Emperor, okay, that's about 2,500 years ago. That would be the common ancestor, okay, for all Chinese basic people believe. So basically we can consider that's the mark of the Chinese civilization. They have a government and they have some really, uh, some uh, state, concept of state coming up. And then his wife, so-called uh, Lei Zhu, okay, who is the, also provide the silk, okay, teach people how to do silk. So basically this couple is kind of like consider the, the, the ancestor of all Chinese, uh, uh, civilized Chinese, let's put it this way. So after you move on, after Yellow Emperor, Emperor okay, then after 100 years, they have so-called Yao and the Sun. Okay, here we all list the, the dynasty, right? Xia, okay, Sang, Zhou, okay. So that's before Confucius time. So we put the time about the Xia is about 2000 BC. And if you compare to Bible, that would be about the Abraham's time, right? So, and then we all pair with the sage king and the tyrant. So we have the uh, Yu as the uh, 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 the founder of the Xia and the, the Jie as the, the last uh, uh, emperor of the Xia dynasty who is a tyrant, okay? Then we have the Sang and the, 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 the founder, always the sage king, which is Tang, uh, Tang. And the, the last one is Zhou, which is a tyrant. Okay, so, uh, so sometimes when you read, sometimes it gets difficult, okay, because sometimes the writer mentioned the dynasty name, which is Xia or Yin, and the founder, okay, which is Sage King, is Yu. Who did, what, what did he do? Okay, he is the uh, uh, channel builder, okay, and uh, because at that time China had flood and he fixed it, so he did a great job. And what the Yao and the Sun did, something great because they don't give their position as an emperor to their son. They give to the virtuous people. So Yao, when he is old, he doesn't give the position to his son. He finds that the Sun is the great people. So uh, ask him to become the emperor. When Sun is old and uh, he didn't give the position of emperor to uh, his son, he gave to Yu because Yu did another great work. He fixed the 
uh, flood. So that's what they did a great, great job. You know, so that's the history, ancient history about the time. You know, so you, if you want to relate it, so a uh, song, okay, it's about like almost the same time as Moses, okay, or uh, later part will be the Trojan War during this period of time. So that's how old we are talking about. And uh, when you read the ancient Chinese writing, they always mention this old time. Yeah. Uh, Pin, please. I just want to add two very uh, important mythological uh, figures was uh, Niwa and Fuxi. Mm -hmm. So Niwa was the woman that saved the world by mending heaven. Uh, Fuxi was accredited with inventing all kinds of things related to civilization. Yeah. So that's all. Yeah, Fuxi is, um, it, Bagua is all related to Fuxi. So, you know, that's another uh, part, yeah. We, we will talk about this one. And then we move on, that's the Zhou Dynasty, which is Confucius considered the greatest uh, 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 dynasty. So Zhou, basically you separate as two parts, the, the, the West Zhou and the East Zhou. So when we talk about Zhou here, talk about the West Zhou, when they uh, studied, they have the Qin Wen and the Qin Wu, both are sage kin. Okay, so that's about the time in the King Solomon's time. So that's the Zhou Dynasty. And when the East Zhou, that's the second part of Zhou Dynasty, is split to two parts. It's Chunqiu, the spring and the autumn, that's Confucius time. And the Lao Tzu also live this time. And then, and Buddha also start from this time. Okay, so at the second part, okay, of the uh, East Zhou is so-called the Warring State. That's about 500 BC. And that's mentions Zhuangzi and uh, during that time. And uh, then uh, in the Western world, uh, Socrates and uh, Alexander the Great, okay, basically is around this time. And uh, then time move on, it's Qin and Han, uh, China become united. So that's the brief history on this. And uh, the important for the writer is you need to remember, okay, to note all this pair, okay. So on the line, above this line, that's all good guy. On the bottom, there's a bad guy. So you, you remember this one? So Yellow Emperor from Yao Sun Yu, that's the Xia Dynasty. And the, the Tang, that's the uh, Sang uh, Dynasty, Tang, okay. And then uh, they have Wen Wu, that's Zhou Dynasty. And the so-called Zhou Gong, that's the Duke of Zhou, okay, who is not king, but he is a great person. He's a prime minister. He set up all the feudalism system, which can, uh, Confucius considered the greatest system. And we shall go back to this system, which is built by Zhou Gong or the Duke of Zhou. Okay, he do this one. And that's the Confucius time. So on the bottom, that's the enemy, right? So uh, Yellow Emperor, okay, his enemy is Chi Yu, okay, his people from the South. I think that represents the, the culture, the Northern culture and the Southern culture. They probably have a war. Okay, so Chi Yu is the bad guy. And then again, here from Tang, he built the Shang Dynasty and then he killed the tyrant. Okay, tyrant belonged to the previous uh, dynasty. Uh, it's a Xia Dynasty. So he, that's the Jie is tyrant. And the Zhou is another, ty uh, another uh, tyrant who is the last emperor of the uh, uh, Shang Dynasty. So unfortunately, the spelling are the same, but the Chinese were are different. Zhou spells the tongue, the tyrant, but the dynasty means Zhou, okay. Remember that's a two different word, Zhou and the Zhou. Okay, so I, when I mention the tyrant, I will always call tyrant Zhou, okay. And when we mention the Zhou, there was the Zhou dynasty. So that's the, the two different name, but uh, the romantic, uh, romantized right, uh, spelling are, are the same. So I just list the them and this one in this one from Lo Cao, Nestor, Kinder, all the way down. And then uh, we will say this one. Okay, so that's uh, Feng Yulan's writing. I think that's important. Basically, Feng Yulan is talking about when Confucius, okay, talking about he always praised the Qin, Wen, Wu, and the Zhou Gong, the Duke of Zhou, talk about a thousand years ago, okay, this kind of ancient. Right, the Wen and the Wu, okay, that's the founder of the Zhou dynasty and the Duke of Zhou who built the uh, 
the government system. Okay, that's Confucius always look backward on this one. When Moise come out, he talk about a lot of Yu who, because Moise, if you remember, Moise is kind of like more on the technical and the scientific side. He, he focused more on the uh, uh, construction and uh, military, this kind. So he praised the people even older than the Zhou dynasty, which is about 2000 years, 2000 year BC, that's about 1500 years before his time. Okay, he keep talking about Yu. And when Mencius come out, he want to, he has a debate with Moise, right? So he talk about the people even older, he talk about Yao and the Sun, which is 2000 years before his time. Okay, so he talk about even older time because Yao and the Sun are not selfish. They give the throne, the position of emperor to the right person, not give to their son. So Mencius is talking about, that's great, that's better. And when Taoism talking about uh, the ancient time, he talked about Fuxi, Shen Long, the even before the civilization. So based on this writing, okay, and the Feng Yulan has an interesting conclusion about the legalism uh, philosophy of history. Uh, he said that by this looking to the past, this Chinese philosopher created a regressive view of history. Although belonging to different schools, they all agree that the golden age of man lie in the past rather than in the future. The movement of uh, history since then has been one of progressive degeneration. Hence, man's salvation consists not in the creation of something new, but in a return to what has already existed. To this view of history, the legalist, the last major school of the Zhou period, which is uh, the later part of warring state, took sharp exception. They, the legalists, fully understood the changing needs of the time and they viewed them realistically, although admitted that the people of ancient time were more innocent and in this sense, perhaps more virtuous. They maintain that this was due to material circumstances rather than any inherent superior goodness. So here's the two paragraphs. First, talk about the Chinese. When we read the, uh, the text, always mention the old time, the antiquity, that means the good time. Everybody compete, okay? Who find the role model is the older time, the older, the better. And then, Legalism is an exception. Legalism realize this situation. They are forward looking. So they, their writing is they don't praise the old sage. Okay. They only talk about the future, what we need to do. So I think that's the sharp difference you know, between in the uh, philosophy of history in the uh, uh, legalism and uh, uh, different school. So uh, we have a few hands up. Let's uh, uh, move on quickly. And then let's have, I don't know the order. Let's go from CK, uh, Arena, and Mike. CK, please. Uh, yes, uh, Jason, can you bring up to the slide that you first have of the dynasties of the history? Is it this one? Uh, no, for the. This one? The, yes. This one? Yes. Okay. So if you look at Xia, right? It says Xia, Yin. I've yeah, never yeah. heard of Xia called Yin. Is it Yin Shang? Is it? Yin oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, Xia is not in. Uh, do I put Shang, in? Right? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's a mistake. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yin is this one. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank then, you for this. No, no, no worries. Yeah, you're welcome. Then uh, for the other, when you bring the, the next slide, please, the one further down. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Right. It, when you see, when you say sages and tyrants, you have a yellow emperor. I think there's another person missing there. I think it's a uh, Yan. I mean, the red emperor, right? Oh, Yan, oh, Yan, Yan Di. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah there's a Yan, Yan. Okay, that's a uh, Yan, Yan. Yeah, Yan is earlier than uh, yellow emperor. Okay, right. Yeah, but they had a war. I think a series of wars, and the yellow emperor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mythologically defeated the Red Emperor. Yes, that's right. And yeah, that's took right. over his tribes. But the Red and Yellow Emperors were both revered as the ancestors of the Chinese people. 
Correct, correct. So I think the Red Emperor shouldn't be missing there. Um, uh, I, okay, but Yellow Emperor is more famous though, right? You have yeah, to, yeah, yeah, but we call the Chinese people <laughs> Yan Huang Zi Sun, so Yan yeah. is the afraid, ahead of the Huang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, and, too many. And, I sometimes I miss it. Yes, yeah, and then Shi Yo is, 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 I think, uh, downgraded to being the enemy, which is politically, uh, I think, is uh, because history is written by the winner. Oh, well, yeah, winners. of course. <laughs> uh, and, and Shi Yo is, is, in some ways, have been rehabilitated recently. They, Shi Yo is, uh, uh, maybe revered by some of the ethnic minorities of China as their ancestors, as their ancestors. Yes, yeah, on the southern part. Yeah. Yes, so there is yeah. not necessarily in such diabolical opposition. I think they're all unity between the Yellow Emperor, the Red Emperor and Chiyo. They all form this Chinese family of, uh, of peoples rather than to, to have one above the other. I think Chiyo is also to be, uh, should be uh, reinstated as one of the sages. That's my opinion. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, who's next? Uh, uh, let's go to uh, Adina, please. Um, yes, now I'm asking an easier question. Okay, then I can answer. <laughs> it's better. Okay. Um, what did New Wa, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, what did she do and what was going on to happen to the earth and heaven? And oh, that's a, yeah, that's an easy question, but it's a long story. Yeah. So, uh, oh, short. Um, yeah, short. Make it short. Okay. Uh, when the heaven broke, okay, so uh, New Wa uh, 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 used the rock to fix the heaven. Okay, and then so that okay because no story because they had the four column and they have a, 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 a guy a monster and they hit the one of the column so the heaven tilt and the broken so Niwa kind of take the rocks to fix the heaven there's a they make a 361 uh, rocks to fix heaven they only use 360 as one left. And that one become the jade. So we talk about data, we will talk about the story, the famous writing, the red chamber gem, a uh, red chamber dream. Okay, so that rock uh, become the uh, uh, a, a boy. Okay, and that's another love story. Okay, so it, it, it's all connected. So uh, just like uh, Greek mythology. So the, the long story. Okay, so uh, that's it. Yeah. Uh, Mike and the pin. Mike, please. You know, tying this uh, as to how this went, uh, I often think of it as what you see depends on your point of view. Now, you brought out that um, the, the civilization advanced by the different philosophers, um, and uh, you, you suggested that the philosophers were suggested by the governments uh, that they were uh, that they needed to go. Now, I just wonder if you could extend this, uh, that this really started with the invention of agriculture, getting people to live in cities, and cities uh, begat commerce, and commerce begat jealousies uh, that begat wars, which necessitated the governments. And uh, I, I see underneath one of your charts, that uh, they started with uh, tribes or prefectures, and then they expanded to kingdoms, and then they expanded to dynasties. Now, I just wonder to what extent that all of these things were underlined. You could say it's philosophy that created civilization, or you could, can you say that commerce is really created civilization and jealousies among commerce created uh, uh, wars, and that's what created uh, all of these things. I see the beginning, uh, the gods were, first of all, the first god was kind of a uh, fertility, a, uh, an agriculture god, and then it, um, it got increasingly uh, into tyrannical, warlike gods. Uh, so is, is there, uh, can you uh, map what we've seen into uh, really the uh, wars uh, 
uh, and for example, when was the Great Wall of China built? Which dynasty built that as a as a defense uh, against wars? So is, is war the the driver? If you if you look at it from that viewpoint, that made it necessary to get different organizational dynamics, which created different philosophies. Uh, thank you, Mike. And then uh, let me try to answer in a brief way because you, uh, you, you, you basically a lot of uh, a question I have to answer. Okay, but put this way: first, if you pay attention on this, there's no commerce here. Okay, so for the two thousand over two thousand years of history, Chinese always downgrade, look down on the uh, trade business commerce. Okay, unlike Greek. They are the tra trading state. Okay, so Chinese are agricultural state. So basics, there's, there's the merchant is not important or considered as low level. Okay, so that's the first thing I like to mention. Second thing is if you look at this one, the history. Okay, so basically after agriculture, we have the yellow emperor. Every other basis represent. If you look at it, it's not possible during that time. You have the great state, United States. That's not possible. It must be, or I think it must be the one of the tribe, okay, being stronger. So people respect kind of as the leader of the alliance, okay, chairman of the group. So this kind of uh, concept. So I think that's the, the development on that. Regarding the war, I think. Uh, uh, the, the, the Great War was built during this time, the warring state, because the Han people, H-U-N, the Han people, the before uh, the ancestors of Mongolia, they are the nomad uh, people on the north. They try, they, 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 they constantly loot the civilized China. So they have to build war to defend. Okay. So this war keep building through the history until Ming, Ming Dynasty still have the war. So today's uh, the Great War you see in China in Beijing is I I don't think that the old one built in two thousand years ago still exists, but most of them are built in the Ming Dynasty, which is in the six seventeenth uh, century. So so that's the war. And about the philosophy, I think the philosophy is a difficult turn in China because. Uh, China doesn't have the jiap or something called philosophy. They have a different school, academic school, and it's always related to the literature, to the history, and to the government. So it, unlike uh, in Greek tradition, we talk of philosophy as love of wisdom. Okay, so basics, that is not the same concept. So that's I have to say to answer your question, uh, Mike, I hope. Uh, I touch most of your question, and then uh, we will have more detail uh, if you keep joining us. <laughs> uh, Pim, uh, the, uh, can I follow up uh, briefly? Uh, the, um, uh, the Tang Dynasty or some of these early dynasties essentially uh, built up uh, groups of people. Did they build cities at that point? Did they have cities at that point? And if they had cities, how did they control feeding those people uh, and uh, taking people away from agriculture to feed those people that they used to build uh, to, to build the, the uh, uh, those cities? Okay, so I think the concept of city probably if you think if you think of a city, you either think about uh, the. Uh, a Greek city state or in the great the Roman Empire, so called the city, right? The Rome, okay, you have city, then you need the, uh, a suburban area to support uh, the food, everything for the city. But in Chinese, Chinese during that time, I don't think we have the China has the, the concept of city, either in the Greek or Roman concept of city. Basics is a feudalism system. So you have the king. And they have the, let's say they have the 10 song and the one inherits the place and the 10 go to different place, different place. And they, they set their own little kingdom. And when they have the son, then they go, that's the feudal system. So very much is like, you know, there's a royal and they have outside, they all doing agriculture and their job 
the common people's job is supply the food for the royal family. And the, during the later time, before they are the different kingdom, they are brother or cousins, but later time become their blood relationship got distant. So their relationship is not that close. They start have a war. So during the time is not busy in agriculture, they will be, the people will get drafted and they go into the fight. So I think that's the relationship during that time. And I think it's very different from, uh, from the uh, Western tradition. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mike. Okay, uh, Pim, please. Oh, hi. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mike, for the great question. I just want to tag on to your answer a little bit, uh, Jason. So um, actually, Confucius touched on this question that uh, in the Li Yun chapter, which uh, last year we studied um, in, in the uh, Book of Rights. So Confucius basically said, yeah, in the very primitive times, uh, people's virtues were were better, and as towns, but later on towns start townships started to arise, and battle between the townships arose, and uh, people started building walls and developing weaponry, and that's when things started to degrade, and no no the utopia never uh, no long, longer existed, and then he talked about how in the time that uh, he lived in his modern time, you know, things had already degenerated, so you needed the rights to, um, to have a harmonious society. Um, so uh, your other question, Mike, about cities, uh, you asked about Tang Dynasty. Tang Dynasty is actually not one of the earlier, earliest dynasties. It, Tang Dynasty was about 1300 yeah. years ago. Uh, but Tang Dynasty have very large cities. The uh, Pablo city Xi'an, or Chang'an at that time it was called, but modern day it's um, located near Xi'an, uh, had a population of about a million people. Mm -hmm. But um, Jason is right that the Chinese always uh, traditionally looked down on, on, on uh, business people, but uh, commerce was very always very vibrant. So as far as towns, it started even before, uh, you know, Xia Dynasty or even earlier. Uh, and commerce was, you know, trade was also always very vibrant. So there wasn't a problem of feeding people. Uh, you know, farmers produced goods and they flowed uh, naturally through, tr through business and trade to the cities and the cities produced things that the farmers needed. So that was not a problem. Uh, I also have to uh, want to follow up on CK's excellent point. You know, you, in the historical texts, um, uh, some some of the historical texts, ancient texts, actually, it appeared that Shi Yu and Yan Di, you know, are one of our ancestors. Uh, that's parallel to Huang Yellow Emperor, were probably the same person actually. And there's also some indication that Shen Nong, Chi Yu, and Yan Di, all three of them were really the same, same person. But uh, that's less clear, but uh, it's more clear that Chi Yu and Yan Di probably yeah. referred uh, to the actually the same, to the same figure. Yeah, I think sometimes uh, Yan Di is related to the Shen Nong, right? Shenong, right. Yeah, it's so related. all three of them were related. Yeah, all, uh, and uh, as CK said, I think, uh, for example, the Hmong people consider Yan Di, the, the Red Emperor, or the Fire Emperor, to be their- You mean what uh, kind of Han, Han people, Hmong? Hmong, Hmong. Oh, Hmong, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Can I yeah. ask something really quickly? I just want to point out, can you, if you go to the next slide, the, the, the dynasties, I want to point out to everybody in the meeting, okay, the Xia, Shangzhou, these three are uh, uh, right now being slowly discovered as real dynasties. Okay. But in terms, so, it, but before the Xia, let's say the Yellow Emperor, Yao Shun, they, are not, they have not been proven. They stay as mythology only for now. But the, the evidence of Xia, Shangzhou, these three, 
uh, uh, dynasties they might have existed really before? Oh, yeah. well, well I, um, I'll just add a little bit. Actually, Zhou was never questioned. Xia was uh, proven through the oracle bones uh, in more than 100 years ago. Uh, I mean, Song Dynasty. But Xia, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, Xia is still uh, not not a hundred percent, you know, uh, there are different, there's still some different opinions whether it's fully proven through archeology. span Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, I think the Xia is still questionable. That's a, that's what I read, you know, still right. questionable. And before there's that- no question, no question about Song or so. Song, yeah, you go to the uh, National Museum, you can see a lot of the uh, relics on the Song. But Xia, they mentioned, up, we, we don't know. But okay, uh, okay. So I think we had to move on and I will skip the reading on the uh, uh, five termine. I, I think I tried to read this one for many, a few times, every time I fail because this one is long and they usually have a lot of questions. So, you know, uh, let's find another chance. We have a chance to do it. Okay, so that's quick. We move to the last part. We got two chapters. So I'm not going to read all the last. This one is the Dao De Jing, uh, 27. Okay, talk about hidden intelligence. Okay, so um, I think that's, uh, let's see what's the time. Okay, let's do this way. So let me going to read this one. This one is a little bit long. Okay, uh, let's read the second part. Uh, oh no, let's read from the beginning. Okay. Uh, that, that's the translation I make, okay, a slightly different from the people who are uh, from different translation, but, you know, I provide the Chinese and you are welcome to, uh, 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 to have your own uh, interpretation. So th th this, uh, let's start from the middle. The sage are always skillful at keeping everyone because nobody is abandoned as useless. The sages are always skillful at keeping things because nothing is abandoned as useless. Okay. Basic here is talking about uh, doesn't matter the people are good or bad, they both are useful to the sage. Uh, okay. So basically here is the Taoism teaching is talking about the uh, sage will not abandon the, uh, uh, the, the useless people or not good people, uh, not, not good. Okay, so this is called the hidden intelligence. Then here it talking about the skillful, the worthy men are the teacher for the uh, unskillful, which is the unworthy men. The unskillful people are useful as a resources. They use the word zi, okay, uh, for the skillful people, okay. So the conclusion is those who don't value their teacher or don't use their resources will be lost even if they are knowledgeable. This is called the unknowabilities. So that's the uh, Dao De Jing's reading on the chapter 27 and uh, then Let's see how Han Fei's interpretation on this chapter. Okay. Uh, Elena, you have some question or? Um, yes, very, just a short question. What's unknowability? So we have unskillful <laughs> and unskillful men. And once we use the, this principle, what's, what's, what, is, what does that mean? This is the key to the unknowability. Okay, so uh, some some these words I translate as unknowability, but another translation is subtle subtlety or mystery. Okay, so basics this one is, I think I will follow Pin's uh, advice and not answer your question because that's a great question. So basics is talking about uh, uh, something mystical. Okay, so let's forget about this <laughs> this answer for now. You know. Yes, that's just uh, the way of Dao De Jing's uh, uh, writing. But basically the key I like to, to mention is uh, in the Dao De Jing, Lao Zi's teaching is uh, 
uh, don't abandon the useless thing, don't abandon the bad people or unskillful people because they are your resources on that. For the sage, you are doing this way. And what I'm going to focus on is how Han Feizi read this one. Okay, that back to our original question. Okay, does Han Feizi truly believe that's the way to practice Tao? Or Han Feizi had you put his own a uh, 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 word in Lao Tzu's mouth. Okay, so we look at, and Han Fei's writing is a little bit difficult for the uh, uh, non-Chinese because he all, the way he, he do it, he always provide the ancient historical example. And then he has his own idea. And he quote uh, Lao Tzu, okay, say, yes, yeah, that's Lao Tzu said. So let's read this one, uh, be patient a little bit about the net. Okay, so there were valuable jade plates in the state of Zhou. Remember, he's talking about the time. Zhou is not the major kingdom. Zhou is a small kingdom who subordinate to the uh, Song Dynasty. Okay, that's the end of Song Dynasty, which the uh, tyrant Zhou still there. Okay, the Zhou tyrant still. So the Zhou tyrant asked Jiao Li sent Jiao Li to get the precious jade. But the King Wen, okay, King Wen is the, 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 the sage king, will not give them away. Later, uh, Fei Zhong, okay, who is another person sent by the tyrant, okay, came for them, okay. And king Wen gave them out. What's the reason? It was because Jiao Li was a worthy man. He's a good man, but Fei Zhong was not a good man. Okay, it's unworthy man. So think about the situation. The 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 Qin Wen give the jade, okay, to the bad person, not give to the right person. Okay, because the Qin Wen of Zhou dislike to see the worthy man, the good person, advance in his career in the tyrant. And the king would give the Fei Zhong, who is the bad person. Okay, he, so the way king would give the jade to the bad person is he want the bad person get promoted in the in his enemy. Okay, so that's the 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 reason king would okay doing this behavior. So Han Fei's the comment is when king would raise. Uh, tai Gong, okay, Tai Gong is his advisor, okay, tai, tai Gong from the bank of the river. That's another historical account. He's a good person, he promoted him. And he also, and he also give, uh, present Fei Zhong, who is a bad person, uh, the jade. So he promoted both good person and the bad person, okay. And then he quote from the Dao De Jin, those who don't value their teacher, and they don't use their resources will be lost even if they are knowledge, uh, they are knowledgeable. So he quote the same thing, okay? He talk about why you use the good people and the bad people because the bad people in the <laughs> in your enemy and they you use your uh, that your enemy promote the bad people. So that's why, okay? Uh, Lao Tzu talking about both good people and the bad people are useful. You can use the good people as your teacher, that's Tai Gong, become the teacher of the King Wen, and the, the bad people, Fei Zhong, become the resources for you to use. So that's the way Han Fei interpret in this chapter of the Tao Te Ching. So that's one thing I like to talk about. And then let me finish another part. And then it's unfortunately it's a little bit long, Okay, I only read the last part for, for the person who, okay, um, uh, this chapter talk about the subtlety of the Tao. Tao De Jin read to close something first, open it, to weaken something first, strengthen it, to abolish something first, promote it, to take away something first, give it. This is the subtlety of you, using flexibility and the weakness to conquer the heart and the strong. Then he gives the example, just like a fish cannot live out of deep water, don't show the strength of your country to others. 
So when we in the Tao Te Ching reading, I think we have a lot of discussion like uh, why he, why Lao Tzu talk about fish in the deep water and what we'll talk about the uh, the strength of the country don't show other people. Okay, so of course we have the Taoism interpretation. Like uh, uh, interpretation would be your skill don't show off your skill don't show off your wealth right and uh, like you hide your jade inside and wear your plain clothes. Okay, your value don't show other people. That's the very Taoism uh, 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 practice. So let's see how, how Han Fei interprets this one. Again, <laughs> he used a, a historical quote. He talked about Shi, okay, just like a deep water to the, water, uh, to the ruler. Okay, his Shi, okay, influential position must be more influential than the Shi between the minister. So the influential position for the ruler to the minister should be stronger than the position, the influence between different ministers. Once lost, uh, it cannot be recovered. So he called the historical account if the Duke uh, Jian of Qi, okay, lost the Shi to Tian Cheng, okay, uh, 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 that's a usurp, okay, because he, Turn out he lost his uh, shi to his prime minister. So turn out the prime minister the kill uh, the the emperor and he became uh, the, the king of Qi and he became the king. Okay. Then he used another example, the Duke of Jin. Okay. He lost the power to the six nobles. Okay. And then six nobles fight each other. Then become three no nobles and the three family uh, split the Jin. Okay. So that's the famous story. So he talked about the situation is like uh, fish cannot live out of deep water. Deep fish is just the ruler is like a fish and the deep water is your uh, shi. If you lost the shi, you will die. Okay, so basically he put, move on, he talked about reward and the punishment are the state's sharp tool. Okay, it held in the hand of the ruler. They control the minister. If held in the hand of minister, they control the ruler. Okay. If the ruler show the tool of reward and the minister will minimize it and therefore distribute it for the private favor. If the ruler show the tools of punishment, the minister will aggregate, aggravate it and thereby overawe the people. Since if the ruler shows the tool of reward and the minister will abuse his position, and if he shows the tool of punishment, they will utilize his authority. Hence, the saying, the state's sharp tool should not show to anybody. So the sharp tool becomes the two handle, the reward and the punishment. So Han Fei's inter interpretation of the state's sharp tool should not be shown to anybody. The sharp tool to Han Fei is the two handles, the reward and the punishment. So you have the power of reward and the punishment, but you don't show to other people. And that's what he believed Lao Tzu talking about, the sharp tool don't show other people. So I just like to provide these two as the interpretation for the uh, Han Fei and uh, just give you uh, uh, a sense of how uh, same text being interpreted by different people. Yeah. So I think we are two o'clock and uh, then a uh, little bit rush, sorry. And then let's give open a few minutes and we can have a discussion on that. And then uh, Karen, please. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, a clarif clarification, do you think when he says don't show the tool mm -hmm. of punishment, it's don't let people know what the punishment is when they do wrong? Or because I, I thought a, a key thing of legalism was that you, you put in place laws that are very clear and then um, and and you're very consistent about rewarding and punishing and then things will run themselves. Right, that that you know, uh, th those are very motivating factors. And so, once you have the laws, and the laws are clear, and you have very obvious enforcement and rewards for good behavior, then that all uh, things will go smoothly. So, so now I'm trying to fit in and understand the 
holding back and hiding the punishment and reward part? How does that fit in with the keep it clear and things will flow? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for this question. And yeah, I think the reward and punishment, that's put in the two level. If you recall, one is fa, okay? One is so-called su, okay? Fa is the law, which you have to expel out that everybody knows. If you do this, you will have this kind of reward. And if you, uh, 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 if you fail to follow this, you will have the punishment, this kind of punishment. It's clear, everybody know, okay, job discretion. And then they have the Su part, okay. Su will deal with minister, okay. So you have the law to tell people, you have to fight. If you kill two, one uh, uh, enemy, you will get promoted. If you kill 10 uh, enemies, you will get a house, something like this, that's clear. But you have the minister, okay who will help the ruler to evaluate everything and they have their thing. So I will use Su to control this minister. How am I going to control him? I will not let people know, okay? So uh, if we, that's two weeks ago to read it, right? So Guan Zhong right. is talking about the situation, right? The law, you have to spell out. Everybody in the corner of the house know what that means. But you have a suit, you hide in your mind. Even the closest people, even your wife, your husband, okay, your son doesn't know what I'm going to do. Okay. So that's the two part, okay, to control the people. So I think that's the uh, very subtle difference. And you can ask okay. you know, how how there's probably no clear line, but that's the two concepts here. So thank you for asking this question. And so that 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 quote is is directed to the ministers. Yeah, yes, you're dealing with the ministers. ministers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So you talk about if that minister know, then they will manipulate. You know, you mm. to, so so that's how Han say is. Uh, and I think he Dao uh, Dejin uh, have uh, eighty one uh, chapter, and Han Fei probably put the uh, have a comment on like thirty or something. Um, most of them, uh, and uh, then. It's difficult for me to translate it because they use a lot of uh, historical account, and that uh, it's it, you need a full understand of Chinese ancient history to know what he's talking about. Yeah, we have uh, Madeline and Alex. Madeline, please. I believe Alex was was before me. Oh, yeah, Alex, please. Yeah, I think. Uh, these two different interpretations of uh, conquering and being strong and being hidden is manifested in two different ways. And Han Fei Zi, I think if you go to, well, like, for example, like, just like fish cannot live out of deep water. I mm -hmm. think from, from, from Lao Zi's point of view, he's not trying to be offensive. <laughs> this is trying to defense as a defense mechanism and also to bring peace, you know, that's how I feel. But Han Fei's interpretation on the same thing of fish cannot live out of water is just like what we, uh, I think, said before that it, for him, it was more about power, control people, control the ministers, uh, give punishment and rewards. And um, and have no uh, put no uh, value in the human uh, uh, st strengths as to loyalty or you know other aspect of of moral strictly only uh, solely on if you're good if you're good enough then you're good if you're not good enough then you're you're just not good you might be punished so so I think the difference between these two is one that Dao De Jing he's promoting, you know, uh, uh, you know, be more, more of a peaceful kind of a way. But Han Fei is definitely, he is uh, out there trying to, you know, because he's, Han Fei Zi is based on humans are bad, in, you know, internally bad. Like the last uh, uh, meeting we had on Han Fei Zi, in your slide, you know, he genuinely believed that people were bad and sages are no good as well. You know, so I think it's it, it, even though it's the same thing, but they're interpreted in a very different ways. And Han Fei I don't know why he. I think the, I'm not sure if Han Fei misinterpreted 
you know, Lao's uh, explanation, you know, but. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, Madeline, please. All right. Uh, can you go back to 27 first, the uh, Dao De Jing? There we go. So, okay. So, in this one, I was thinking of um, very basic skills uh, Nestor, Kindler, and Farmer in terms of uh, what people do and don't do. Uh, and what the Taoists would look back upon. And then um, in the next slide, the Han Fei Tzu uh, version of this, uh, when it talked about Jade, uh, I was thinking about, uh, Jason, what you and Pin had said about uh, Nu Wa and uh, how one stone that was left over from the rebuilding of the world was Jade. So that this was not just um, not just something valuable like gold plates, but these are something that had to do with uh, the essence of the Tao and possibly secret knowledge uh, that that are that are that are being given to uh, the worthy and the unworthy alike. Yeah, during the uh, warring state, uh, at least I read a lot of story about jade. Uh, the consider probably just like you said, it's not just like a gold plate. The jade is some symbolic meaning on that. So sometimes they have war, okay, between the states because the jade, okay, because the jade is so valuable, and they they don't mind not only kill the people for the jade, even. Uh, the whole country fight another country for the jade. So it's, it's probably, well, for sure, it's not just the meaning of a, a stone or a gold plate. It's some symbolic meaning on that. Yeah, thank you. It also, um, it also has aesthetic qualities, uh, like marble might be in Italy or alabaster. It's something that you could carve in that was translucent and mm -hmm. would seem to give off light in a way. Yeah, yeah. If you go to the Taiwan, the uh, the National Mu uh, Museum, and this, you see a lot of ancient jade, but the quality is not as good as today's jade. But there's a different meaning, and sometimes there's a huge jade, and then uh, it, it's a lot. Yeah, I saw a lot, you know, in the uh, uh, National uh, Museum. Uh, our time is running out, but you know, let's go to Pin and the CK. Yeah. Oh yeah, just real quick, uh, another big element of um, Han Fei's teaching, uh, as far as things that the rulers should not show, is uh, the rulers' likes and dislikes. Yeah. Because once uh, people working for you know what you like or what you don't like, they will use that to manipulate the, uh, manip manipulate you. So I, I just want to add that in because that's something he professed a lot. And, it yeah, wasn't discussed in for your lands writing. Yeah, Han Fei has a, a lot of writing, I think 59 chapter. Okay. And each chapter are I, I, the two person I, I really like to read in ancient uh, during that time. One is Han Fei, one is Xunzi. And I like their writing. You know, that's about about of a 500 word on each chapter. Okay. And the, it's all very clear, messages are very clear. And the, so I like to read the, these two uh, uh, also. That's my person, that's my, but I, I will have a chance to introduce uh, different uh, chapter. So we have a CK and Alex, CK please. Uh, I, I want to sort of uh, try to explain Alex's uh, former <laughs> comment about why Han Fei supposedly misinterpreted Dao De Jing. I think Han Fei knew what Dao De Jing was and how it was supposed to be interpreted. But he was interpreting Tao Te Ching for his own means and for his own reasons, and in, along with the legalist way, to justify his legalist uh, school of thought. So he read Tao Te Ching based on the legalist uh, conception, 
instead of reading Dao De Jing on its own merits. I think that's the, the explanation I would give. Yeah, thank you, CK. Uh, okay, time run out. Let's have uh, Alex at the final word. <laughs> Alex, please. Oh my God, I, 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 was, I was hoping we can talk about the five termites because I actually study. But anyway, uh, I was, you know, I regarding- will, I will. <laughs> Regarding uh, CK's comment, uh, if you know that that's a mystery to me. I, I think it's a pretty mystery because you know Dao De Jing and Han Fei they are like total opposites, right? So I don't know why he had to take Dao De Jing to justify. I mean, he doesn't have to, right? He he's already he feels he's so if he's so righteous, it's kind of you know. So I don't know. Out of all the people, he could take taking from you know. Moism, actually Moism, but I, you know, from Lao Tzu, it's it's a long stretch. Um, I'm not convinced. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I totally my... agree. That's why I think he 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 truly admired Lao Tzu. I, yeah, but I, if, I, I, if, I, if if I can try to answer that, I think in in Han Fei's uh, own philosophy, <laughs> legalist philosophy, there is a lot of references in his own way to the Tao. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the 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 you know the, the Taoist way and Dao De Jing is one of his preferred references to justify his legalist school of thought. <laughs> okay, I believe we will have uh, another hour to argue on what who is right, but we will have another chance. And when we read the uh, uh, what's it, the Sun Tzu, okay, the other war, okay, it also talk about Dao. Okay, so. I I I I think I right now I'm convinced three chap three books I think all the foreigner have to read if you want to understand Chinese I, uh, or Pan Asian thinking. Uh, one is Analect, okay. One is uh, Dao De Jing. One is Art of War, okay. Fan Sun Tzu. I think it's these three, you know, it's very deep deep in the uh, Asian or Pan East Asian. Uh, blood, Japan, Korean, China, Taiwan, Singapore, you know, it's, it's the end of them. Luckily, all these three are very short. And uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I believe that uh, Zhuge Liang asked uh, uh, his uh, 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 general to read uh, Han Fei Zi. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, no, that's that's the true story. He a okay. actually. <laughs> So if you have time, you, you are not happy with read the short book and, I, you, and you still want to understand the Chinese cultural philosophy, will suggest you read uh, Hong Lomo, Red Chamber, and uh, the Romantic for Three Kingdoms, and uh, uh, Journey to the West. <laughs> yeah, yeah, journey to the west. Okay, if you are not happy with the short uh, story of this one, you can just read these three humongous writings. Our, our laws of the march. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, yeah, yeah Sui Hu Zhuan, that's also, yeah. yeah. I don't like Sui Hu Zhuan that much, that much. But anyway, that's well, also- cu Culturally, I think it's, uh, it's a cultural component. Actually, yeah. can I should make a suggestion <laughs> because, you know, uh, in the beginning of the meeting, we were talking about, we're going to talk about, uh, talk about Hinduism and Buddhism, right? Yeah. Honestly, personally, I it's it's so dry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. When I know some dry for we, somebody. Maybe you no. Know, maybe we can uh, use like you know, journey to the west. You know, as a way to talk about Buddhism, it will make it a lot more interesting because it's such an interesting story. Well, and journey to the west is less about the Buddhism. It's more on the Taoism and uh, <laughs> uh, mythology. Really? <laughs> yeah, okay, so, uh, 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 and there is another humor. Okay. I would say that the 2000 years, the Chinese humans are all, all in this book. And then, yes, and a lot of Chinese made us a message in the Western journey. So, uh, I don't know, I still have don't, no idea how to introduce. And I know some summary says, uh, Western summary say, okay, there's a monkey, they have monk, bring the monkey, and eventually they kill seven spiders, two tigers, three uh, 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 robbers, and blah, 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 they eventually get the-, the You see, the, you see, uh, this journey to the West is a classic example of what Lao Tzu is talking about, I think, you know, that, you know, uh, the, 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 you know, uh, uh, um, the 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 boot the boot the 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 journey to the west you know even though he has no ability but he surround himself with people you know like the monkey the pig who has a lot of power 
and you know protect him so he could get so he's a central like you know core value he has a central core value so he used that to even though he himself you know the the monk himself has no real power he's very weak you know he's he's so weak and but you know he knows he surround himself with these very powerful figures you know and 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 guide them to to the west well, Alex, uh, if I may say, say something, the journey to the West, the monkey god has also some relations with Hinduism. The concept sure. of, yeah, Wu Chang'an took the concept of the monkey apparently from the Hindu monkey yeah. god Hanuman. Yeah. 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 Okay. The, the Ramayana story, actually, if you read the Ramayana. So, yeah. So that's why it's all connected together. And then, so, okay. So I have to finish the meeting today. We have overtime 20 minutes. That's a shame. So, but anyway, I enjoy the overtime discussion. And then uh, next week, Pim, you will continue on the equality of things. Okay. For the chapter two. Okay. So, okay. See you next week. And then thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Jason. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.